This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, don't call him Steve. Don't call him Mr. It's Steve. <laughs> it's Stephen Kravitz. Okay. You, call, you can call me just Kravitz. Well, Kravitz, yeah. You know, I had an ex wife of mine who used to call me Bennett. And the reason she did is because she married me, and on the marriage license it says Bennett Schwarzman. Right. And it said Ronnie Bennett, or Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Haste, I think was her name at the time. And so she took the name uh, Ronnie Bennett professionally. All right. In fact, it was in our divorce agreement that she could use my la my she could use my phony last name. Right. Right. So, um, uh, but uh, you know, I. Uh, so what happened? What she did? She came up with this idea. She knew me as Bennett, as as Ben. Right. Bennett Schwarzman. All right. We would have friends. They would come over. She would always refer to me by my last name. So that when they were in the place, they thought, well, she was referring to me as Alex Bennett, and it was just her affectionate right. way of saying, hey, don't do that, Bennett. But right. in her mind, she was saying my first name. It was a brilliant, brilliant idea she had. And I went, yeah. How many times have you been married? Uh, let's see, 87? I think somewhere around that. No, seriously, how many times you married? I I've been married four times, and I decided I keep doing it till I got it right, and I got it right this time. Well, I Good didn't I didn't get it right so much as when you're our age, you really don't think in terms of divorce. Right, right. You, you think in terms of ah, uh, I'll tolerate it. All right, and we have a good relationship, you know. I mean, not like it isn't like all relationships fraught with a certain amount of uh, yelling and screaming at each other, you know. But right. But uh, that's going to happen. That's but, healthy in its own way. Well, I th I don't think there's a couple, no matter how wonderful they loved each other and all of that, you know, there's not a single person out there who uh, is. Um, uh, hasn't had a major fight with their loved one, you know. Right. Uh, the idea is not divorce. The idea is to solve it and move on. Right. You know? And too many people, when they have that first fight, it's divorce. That's it. You know. And and no uh, no relationship is perfect. You know. No. And if you push through the current problem you've got right now with your loved one. Listen, listen who's giving advice, folks. Me. How many times have you been married, Alex? Four. Uh, but then again, I guess I'm more experienced than other people. Well, I've been married three times. Were you married three times? Yes, sir. I didn't know you were married once. Three times. Three times. Okay, first one. First one. Patricia Gillette. We dated through high school, through college. And we lived in San Francisco together. And then you broke up. Right, and then we got divorced. You know what the problem, how old were you when you got divorced? In my, in my early 20s. See, what happens is, yeah, you made it through high school. Right. You made it through college. Right. You made it to San Francisco. Oh, we made it, to, we lived together in Paris, too. Oh, lived together in Paris, okay. And then you moved to San Francisco, and you decided to get divorced. How long were you married? Five years. See, what happens is you were two kids who loved each other. And, right. And what your needs are when you're that age are different than your needs become. Right, right, and, right. And as you get older, you know, that first person was not somebody who was going to last a lifetime. 
Right. The one that's right, going to last right. a lifetime, believe it or not, is when you get to be like 60 and you marry somebody. Right. That, right. that one can last a lifetime. Yeah. How old were you when you got married the last time? The last time? Right. Well, I'm 82 now, so I'd say I was 72, 71. Yeah. So there's still hope for me. Oh, there's still hope for you, yeah, yeah. Especially if you do what I did, I went on J-Date. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's where I met her, on J-Date. We get paid every, really? we get it paid every year a stipend from J-Date, not to mention that fact. You know? <laughs> um, did you really go on J-Date? That's how you met her? Yeah, yeah, well, see, I came to New York and um, I pretty well, you know, I'm, I was kind of out of the the mix. You know, it was easy for me to get laid in San Francisco because I was... Yeah, me too. Yeah, we were stars in San Francisco, right? And I never got laid more than in than San Francisco. Really? Oh, I got laid more times than I can count. Yeah, but, but, but you moved to L.A., right? I moved to L.A. and I didn't get laid at all. Didn't get laid at all. Because you were out of your uh, your your fame area code, right? Uh, and uh, I um, I knew a comic once. I will he'll go unnamed, uh, who used to refer to. I said, "Do you ever cheat on your wife?" And he went, "Not in the four one five area code." Yeah. I've heard that before. You get, if you're more than a hundred miles from your house, you're not married. That's right. Anyway. So uh, it was very easy for me to have relationships in San Francisco. I mean, I just, hey, I'm Alex Bennett. Oh, really? Let's, let's fuck. You know? Uh, Isn't that nice? Yeah. But then I came to New York, and, I, uh, and, and at first I wasn't even on the air, and then I was on Sirius XM, which was on the satellite, which nobody had at that point. I couldn't, right. I couldn't use that, you know? Because my audience was all over the country. I want to travel to Omaha to get laid? No. Right? So I don't know how to date. I had forgotten how to date. No, me neither. Me too. So, so I thought I would go to the lowest common denominator and try one of these dating services. So I can't remember what the first one was I signed up with, but I signed up with a couple of them. It's costing me a lot of money. These things were like $30 a month. Right? Right. And uh, I joined J-Date. And Marjorie wrote me, said, uh, talk, talk to me a little bit. And I said, let's cut to the chase. When do you want to get together? And we got together and we had a date. And I didn't figure this was the woman, you know. But I like going to movies with her. We had a, right. A, a, so we kept going to movies with each other. And all of a sudden, one day I said, you know, I'm kind of enjoying being around this person. You know, and it it grew that way, but it was J date was the uh, she actually asked me out on the first date. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. She also asked me to marry her uh, because it was leap year, and on leap day, a woman can ask a guy to marry them. That's the that's the tradition. Oh, I didn't know that. So she said, "Today's leap year, and it's leap day, and uh, will you marry me?" And I said, I looked at her, and you know what my answer was? This, I'm, this is the kind of romantic that I am. It just gives you a clue <laughs> to my romantic qualities. Yeah. But, but when she, she said, Would you, will you marry me? I thought for a second, and then I said, well, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. <laughs> Mr. Romance. Yeah, no kidding. Come to me, right? But I, uh, you know, it's been it's been a good marriage, you know. So anyway, that was your first marriage, and it was right. doomed to failure because you 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 just were in love with each other for too many years when you were young, and then when you get to be like maybe twenty five, you start realizing your priorities in life are completely different than hers. Right, right, right. You know, it's all right. changed. Part of what changed with me in, in my life between wives was that I became, I got on the radio. And it was a different kind of thing. Women, women started chasing me. Rather than me having to chase them and them go get lost, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, I, uh, 
you know, I, I, I just, uh, uh, as I uh, went through each successive wife, there was a different part of my life. Second wife was, uh, uh, was Ronnie Bennett, who was my producer on radio in New York. And when we got divorced, she left me and went with Barbara Walters. So oh, I be wow. and became associate producer of Barbara Walters. Well, first she went to the Dick Cavett show, just answering phones and things like that. And then she got this job as associate producer on the Barbara Walters specials. Good for her. Which was a great career for her. I mean, she got to travel all over the world because part of the job of an associate producer is to go do the pre-interview. Right. In other words, sit down with the person she, Barbara's going to interview and pre-interview them and write down some of the answers and some of the areas, you know, of what she should touch on and so right. on and so forth. So they would try, you know, have her travel to London to go see an actor she, Barbara was going to interview, you know, or to Paris for somebody else some, or to China. Oh, wow. You know, she traveled all over the world. And... uh uh, it was a great job for her. She did it for 12 years. She was uh, associate producer on the Barbara Walters specials. So um, she was very bright, you know. But the problem was we got married when I was in Houston, and that's when I saw, found my first fame, and all of a sudden there were women chasing me. Right. And, and in my whole life I had never had women chasing me. Okay, well, look. Does this look like a kind of face you'd chase? Well, the same thing with me in San Francisco. I never had women chasing me before. Exactly. So it becomes hard to be married to somebody when every all these women are chasing you. And so we had this very... Uh, I was a horrible husband to Ronnie. I was cheating like crazy. I mean, years later, uh, I went back to her and I said, I, you know, we hadn't talked in years, and I said, I'd like to have lunch with you. And she says, okay, and we sit down. I said, the reason I'm having lunch with you and that I'm picking up the tab uh, is that uh, uh, I was a horrible husband and I want to apologize. And she liked that, you know. She thought that was terrific, you know. And after that, we became friends again and t stayed friends until she died, you know. But uh, I was a horrible husband. I, was, I don't know how she put up with it. You know, finally she left me. Now here, you're gonna love this story. One night she says to me, that's it, I'm through. She starts packing, you know, it's the end of the marriage. And she leaves. Now, I don't know where she goes, but I find out later. She left me, you, you, hold on to your, do you have something to hold on to your seat? Okay. For Troy Donahue. You remember Troy Donahue? The actor? No. Oh, come on. How many movies was this guy in? He was like in more, uh, was under contract to Warner Brothers and was the heartthrob of millions of women. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And Troy had become a friend of mine and she was running off to be with him only when she got there. Troy said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> and now she had no way to go back, so she figured out where to stay and, and so on. But she left me essentially for Troy Donahue. People out there are laughing, okay, because they know who I'm talking about. Right. Not, right. He, did you ever see? You saw The Godfather too, right? Yes. You remember the 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 sister of of Al Pacino in that picture, uh, Talia Shire? Right. right. And she has a guy she wants to marry. Right. That was Troy Donahue. Oh, okay. And in the movie, they referred to him, as, his name was Merle. The character's name was Merle. That was Troy Donahue's real name. Oh, really? Merle, yeah. yeah. Merle Donahue? Well, no, it was Merle Morrison or something. I don't know. Merle, doesn't, Oberon. I don't know. I mean, it was a name I can't remember, but. Well, that's like me and my first wife. We now have lunch once a week. You have lunch once a week now. And we didn't talk for like 15 years. And you probably like her, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is she, I enjoy her company. Is she married? No. No. So is there a future in that? I don't think so. Oh, okay. All right. I think we're just going to be lunch buddies. Well, that's good. You know? Yeah, I enjoy it. I mean, I, I was so happy at, towards the end of her life that I was Ronnie's friend. 
Right. You know, and that she could call me anytime and I'd talk to her and she had a problem, I want, I'd help her solve it and whatever. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, I thought the world of her. You know, and she used to do this show like you're doing it. You replaced Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I don't pass away. <laughs> no, don't do that to me. But uh, we watched her as she slowly progressed towards death. Ultimately, she, uh, uh, well, we could say she committed suicide. She did, uh, up in up in uh, Oregon, they have compassionate suicide. Right, they have assisted suicide. Assisted suicide. It isn't so much assisted as uh, helped. Uh, they get you the pills, and they sit in the house. As long as you feel you don't want to die, you don't take the pills. And when right. you want to take the pill, when you want to die, you take the, you tell your doctor, and you take the pills. And she got to a point where she didn't. Things weren't going to get any better. The last time I talked to her, if I showed you a video of the last time I talked to her, you wouldn't think she was going to commit suicide. Like four days later, you know. Had what no, was she diagnosed with? Um, she had pancreatic cancer, and they cured it. Oh. They cured it. Some brutal operation, but they cured it. And um, she started getting other things, other cancers. So you know, it, it eventually she. I'd like to say she died of pancreatic cancer because that probably caused triggered all the other cancers. Right. Right. So, but uh, she decided to put it, you know put herself out, and I got a call from a girlfriend who told me she was dead. And I couldn't believe it because I had just done a video with her like four days earlier. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And she never called me to say I'm doing it, which I think was considerate on her part because I would have, you know. I would Tried have, to talk I, her out of it? I probably would have tried to talk her out of it, yeah. And I mean, she was, she was in, I think, a lot of pain and uh, I think that uh, it, it's it's important that uh, that all you do for people like that is you let them make the decision, and uh, and and abide by it, you know. Right. Because she, you know, when you know when she knew she was going to die, it was just a matter of when and how much pain did she want to go through to do it. And I think right. the pain had gotten to a point where she just went, uh, "I'll suck the exhaust pipe," you know. Right, 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 right. So that was uh, that was number two, that wife, and uh, the relationship lasted a lifetime. You know, it's wonderful, like yours. That's that's right. really good. But now, it, uh, was that your first, the one you're right. seeing now? Wow, you know that's amazing. You probably figure you all, you both have a lot in common with each other. Right, we do. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's that's sweet. That's nice, you know. In fact, she's been she's been at the Cape for the last three weeks, and I, I miss having lunch with her. Well, uh, okay, well, I would investigate that a little more. <laughs> that, you know. Well, I'm in contact with all of my three wives, ex-wives. Really? Who was your yeah. Who was your second wife? Paula Dwyer. Paula Dwyer, and and what was it about Paula that made you marry her? She was drop dead gorgeous. Oh boy, don't you just hate that? And then one morning you wake up and you see her walking across, like I happened to me with one girlfriend, walking across the room naked and going, "God, that's the most incredible body I've ever had sex with. Right. I can't, I can't stand it anymore." I didn't know what well, hit I me. Found myself, I found myself getting jealous. Getting jealous of her when she would, what, look at another guy or something? Or another guy would hit on her because she was always getting hit on. I mean, she was gorgeous. Yeah, but she was used to that, right? Yeah. So she probably didn't give in to that kind of temptation. No, not at all. Not at all. Hmm. But you were jealous. You would yell and scream when she reacted to a guy that came up to her or something? No, I didn't yell and scream. I just was jealous internally. Oh, so you got mopey. Yeah. yeah you got mopey. Right, right, you did, right. You did right. mope, and then they say, is there anything wrong? And you go, no. No, there's right. nothing wrong. And then I ended up relapsing on drugs. While you were with her. Right. And, and that's when she said, I want out. Well, I would say it, too. I think you would agree you would say it too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Boy, so she was drop dead gorgeous. So you married her. How long were you married to her? Not long, like two years. Two years, wow, that's a short one. And then number three? Number three, I met before number two. I dated her for like five years before I met number two. And then we had gone our separate ways before I met number two. Mm -hmm. And I married number two, and then somehow I recontacted with number three, mm -hmm. who was actually, I met before number two. Mm -hmm. And we got married. We got married at uh, Justice of the Peace, right there in LA. Mm -hmm. And she moved, she, she hated being in LA. Actually, my second wife hated being in LA also. She wanted out of LA. She wanted to have kids, but she didn't want to have them in LA. She wanted to go back to San Francisco. Okay. You know, the, my second and third wife were both San Francisco women. Mm -hmm. One was uh, up like Sebastopol, and the other one was uh, San Leandro. Okay. All right. So you met her while you were. I bet you met her while you were working at Tommy T's. The, the third wife, yes. <laughs> I figured because you lived in San Leandro and that's where Tommy T's was. Right, and that's where I met her. Yeah, and uh, how long were you married to her? Ten years. Really? Yeah. Wow. That one lasted a while. Right. What was it about that one that made it last that long? She was incredible. She was really, really, really smart and loved me unconditionally. I got clean while I was with her, and I've been clean ever since. Wow. So what broke that up? I mean, that, that seems like if, if you would actually quit drugs for her, okay, right. there's gotta be something really, a really strong bond there. So what happened? Well, I was five years clean, mm -hmm. and we were living in Carson City, Nevada. Why Carson City? Because she wanted a backyard, she wanted a, a home. We bought a house up there, and there was a backyard, and there was a you know a deck to sit out on and have coffee. And she wanted those things. She hated L.A., and she knew I needed to be back in L.A. And I went, it, so that's what basically broke us up was me going back to L.A. to live, and her staying in Carson City. She still lives in the same house. In Carson City. Right. Because to me, Carson City was a city that I used to turn uh, left at, uh, left on, uh, to go out to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Oh, is that right? Which my friend owned. And also, I remember Carson City as being two other things. It is the home of the Nevada State Prison. And it's the capital of Nevada. Well, it's the capital of Nevada, too. But it's the, it has the prison. They used to do all the executions there. And I can't remember if it was in the prison or somewhere else. I actually had dinosaur footprints that I went and visited. Yeah. Oh, really? But Carson City was always where you went through if you were going from like Vegas to Reno. Right. Right. right? Exactly. It's where you t where you stop to take a pee. Is really what Carson City <laughs> was. To pick up a cup of coffee. Funny part is, uh, and we're running out of time here. But the, uh, the, the, the worst thing about Nevada is, is that it's so small that it only has really two major cities and a few minor ones. Right. You know, it has Reno and it has Las Vegas. And then right. over on the other part of the state, you got Elko. Right. Which is a fairly large city. Uh, and when you put Carson City into the mix, it's one of the smaller cities in, in Nevada. Right. You know. And they got Laughlin also. You got Laughlin, but Laughlin survives because it's right outside Vegas, and everybody goes there because they go to the they go to the uh, Boulder Dam or Hoover Dam or whatever it's called these days. Right, whatever it's called. We took the dam tour. Uh, and Laughlin is all casinos. And and then Laughlin has casinos, and it's really it's a very nice city for casinos. It's you know right, but it, all of a sudden there's this little Las Vegas outside of Las Vegas. Right, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. But that's 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 really all that is in that state, you know. That's it. You know, there's, outside of Reno, there's another town called Sparks. Right. But that doesn't really count. So outside of outside of uh, Vegas, there's Henderson. Yeah, but 
basically it's Reno, uh, Las Vegas, and then Elko. Those are the those are your big cities. Right. And the only reason Elko is a big city is it's so far from everything else. Nobody wants to leave. <laughs> I mean, that's really a state with nothing in it. When I first went there years ago, I think there were only about maybe a half a million living in the entire state. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, if you held a big music festival and told everybody to stay for six weeks, they'd be able to vote. You know, and, <laughs> and, and I'd vote everybody. You know. Right. But anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say goodbye to you, and we'll see you again next week, huh? Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yeah, that ended pretty fast. Okay, hi everybody, how are you? Uh, good to talk to you and to see you and to see that maybe you're here watching me. Uh, there's nobody getting ready to uh, talk to me except Jeff Stein is waiting, and if you'll wait for a few minutes, Jeff, I'd like to talk about a few things, and then you and I'll talk, and if nobody else joins us within... Uh, Oh, I don't know, the next uh, 10 minutes or so, we'll say goodnight to everybody, and I can just take it easy. Mm. The Thursday night show is always lighter for some reason, and nobody calls, and uh, I, I get to feel taken for granted. But anyway, just before I went on the air, I spilled some Windex all over the floor here, because I had this bottle I got, and... I filled it up with Windex, so anytime I need to clean something here, I could. But I didn't know that it gives up, you know, it, it opens up really easy. And I accidentally dropped it on the floor and it opened up and all the Windex fell on the floor. Now that's not a terrible thing because now I have a cleaner floor, but it happens just before I'm about ready to go on, right? So I'm not ready for anything. But anyway, uh, you know, life goes on here. Uh, as we uh, try to uh, survive and uh, uh, you know everything technically here seems to be working okay except for one thing every now and then there is just something that happens before I go on the air okay that all of a sudden drives me crazy like I have a thing called Dropbox and now on my machine this machine it's frozen and so it then has a thing that uh, it says, it says Dropbox, and then it has the ISP number, and then it says up to date, and that won't go away, and the little uh, beach ball of death keeps spinning round and round and round and round. Well, anyway, we got two people waiting to come on, so, I mean, we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, check them out and see if they're uh, worth talking to. Oh, certainly one of them, Jeff Stein, is, and uh, Alan, Alan's okay most of the time. Sometimes he can get a little out of hand and so on, but uh, hello. Uh, uh, give me a little more of your of your face there. Yeah, there we go. No, that's that good. That's good. Okay, oh, let yeah. me, okay, let me now put them on screen. I Sometimes I just forget because I get so wound up in what I'm doing. Yeah. But anyway, good evening to all of you. I had something I wanted to talk about. You know, in, in my 82 years of life, uh, there are a lot of passings of things that happen. You know, like I can look back over my life and I can look back at, Sam, at uh, my uh, growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area and, and how life was then. As, to po as opposed to how life is now. And I, you know, I have to understand, and, and, and as you get older, you kind of go, gee, when I was a boy, that was, that's your most f favorite statement. Uh, and I'm sure Jeff feels the same way. And, and uh, 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 you know, Alan, <coughs> even uh, to a lesser extent, uh, but you really get to feel that way. And, and things, people die, things die, traditions die. And tonight, I just read about something dying that really grieves me because it was very much a part of my childhood and of my upbringing as I was a young boy. And there was nothing better than what, I, what, what, just, what is dying. 
And I don't know if you've noticed it, Alan, but you're out in California. Um, and what is dying is San Francisco is losing the fog. Hmm. The fog is disappearing because wow. of global warming. Uh, it Wait, already has. Thank you, Donald, thank you, Donald Trump. Well, I won't blame him for it. I, mean, he just, I don't think he had anything to do with it. He didn't do anything to stop it, but, you know. No, no, no. But I just read tonight, as a result of global warming, the San Francisco fog, which, you know, I got to tell you, when you're growing up in San Francisco, as I did as a young boy, there was San Francisco, there was me, and there was the fog, hmm. you know. And then about twenty years later, they came out with automobiles, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but uh, very funny. Uh, uh, but the point is that you know the fog in San Francisco. I can't begin to tell you how much it means to me in me in my memories, because some of my best moments were when I'd be. <clears throat> walking down the street at night and the fog horns would be going off in the bay and there'd be a mist in the air and I'd be walking through the fog in San Francisco and you can't do that anymore it's it's just too uh, it's hotter the, the, it, they said they could actually look out at the bay and see the fog rolling in and they don't, and yeah. they don't see it happen anymore. Have you heard about this, by the way, Alan? I, I haven't heard about it, but I, I about five years ago, I was in the city for a few days, and and I was staying at a hotel, and I mentioned to somebody, you know, it's the time of year for fog. I don't hear any fog horns going. Wait, off there wasn't there. a time of year for fog. There was fog. It was well, I didn't hear any fog horns. Oh yeah, no. Well, what happened was years ago they did away with the fog horns. They didn't have a need for them anymore because radar made it, a, they gave boats the ability to miss all the big rocks mm -hmm. and things like that. And the reason the fog horns were out there were for ships, so they would avoid these, they would put on these big, huge rocks that stuck out yeah, of the water. Yeah, but I liked them. Yeah. But wait a minute, but they put, they put them there, and then all of a sudden with, with radar and everything, they didn't need any more, so they stopped them. And then everybody started complaining where the goddamn fog horns. And uh, uh, they decided, well, what we'll do is we'll put some phony foghorns out on those rocks and just have them go off every night. The only uh, problem was the foghorns, when they were just, there was one here on this rock and on this rock and on this outcropping <clears throat> and whatever, and this part of the shore and so on, uh, they all had a different sound. Mm -hmm. And the ones they installed at these places were like, phonies like recordings okay oh. and so every horn sounded alike and oh. it wasn't the same as it was I mean there was a time I remember when I would go to sleep uh, living on the, uh, on Filbert Street in uh, San Francisco and Telegraph Hill and I'd be lying there in bed I could hear literally the foghorns talking to each other like meh meh and they would there was a kind of talking that went on and uh you know fog was as endemic to san francisco as sourdough french bread or uh dago red wine or any of those other things a crab and there was the, there was the fog and mm -hmm. the fog now is it's it's disappearing and can yeah. you imagine even, fog even hmm? even crab is to a certain extent, a lot of it is disappearing too, because of global warming screwing up the seas and making them more warm. Well, we were very good about, from the very beginning, about crab, because we realized in San Francisco that crab was very important to our our uh, income. And uh, crab was a very important thing in San Francisco. So we had our crab months. We had like only, I think, uh, same thing with they did the same thing with oysters here months with R in them crab was available I got my first crabs in San Francisco yeah and it had to be yeah but it wasn't uh, it wasn't Dungeness uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I knew that joke was gonna come any second now you know Cra crotch crabs yeah. but uh, you know the crab 
uh, the, the reason they did that is they didn't want them to be over hunted, over killed, over over overfished. Fished. Yeah. And so they made it so it was like so many months a year that they, you could have crap. So there, some months it wasn't crap. So big right. deal. It, it, it managed to keep the crop of <clears throat> crab going, you know. Right. So Absolutely. That's, uh, yep. that, that was the... Uh, I mean, last year I was on eating at Fisherman's Wharf and we did a walk and used to early on, I mean, during the day, the crab fishermen would sell their crab there and they'd steam them there and they'd give you a little cup of Dungeness crab and very few of them had it and if they had it it was outrageous well I've, lobster, I've talked about this by on, lobster cheaper I, I've talked about it on this show we uh, used to uh, in San Francisco my parents every night before they would go home we lived in Marin at that point would stop. Oh, and they, they did this when we lived in San Francisco too. But my 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 mother and father, uh, when they would come home from work in San Francisco, he became a real estate broker later on in life, and she worked for the uh, the uh, Variety Ar Artist Union. And uh, they would come home, and they would stop off at uh, Fisherman's Wharf, and they would get two crack crab. What they would do is they would take them out of the boiling water. They would kill them right there, put them in the boiling water, take them out, and then chop them up for you, wrap yep. them up in paper, right? Yep. And then mm -hmm. we, my, my parents would go over and, and buy a loaf of uh, sourdough French bread. I think their their favorite was a thing called Larabaroo. I don't know if it still exists or not. I think not. it's still there. Yeah, and and um, which was great bread, by the way, if you've never it's had it. it. it, it, yep. it you say you've had sourdough French bread, but you really haven't. It's is it still the same way? Is it still the hard crust on the outside yeah. and the the, yeah. the spongy and really soft and yeah and mm -hmm. porous porous on the inside. You yeah. can't get it in New York. It doesn't travel. Not really, it doesn't travel. They try to make it here. I think you know okay. here. But here's what happened with with, with uh, uh, sourdough French bread. The sourdough was a sourdough yeast which mm -hmm. was kept in a sourdough yeast pot now let me explain something the original sourdough yeast came from the gold rush and the reason it wow. existed the reason it existed was that you could take a uh, every miner had a pot of sourdough yeast and what they would do is they would use a little bit of it and they would put the top back on it and then they would use it to make the sourdough French bread. It became the yeast that did the rising on the mm -hmm. on the bread, right? Yeah. And you say, well, eventually you got to go out and buy some more sourdough yeast. No, you didn't, because while it sat in the pot, the bacteria created more yeast. Mm -hmm. So you never ran out of the sourdough yeast. And the yeast Wonderful. that is used to this day in San Francisco sourdough French bread goes back to the gold rush wow Jeez. you know it, it it just keeps regenerating itself and regenerating itself and regenerating itself and uh you know it's it's been a it's been a mainstay and it's great it's just terrific you know um but uh, I, for all i know that's gone the way of all you know they, they might say well we're not using the same yeast we used to use you know but that, that, when I was a kid, I was eating yeast that came from the 1800s, you know, or that regenerated itself from the 1800s. Somebody was pointing out recently, talking about sourdough, but saying that the, the only thing that's really changed in the sourdough is, yeah, we're talking about the yeast and stuff, is the water. The water is a million years old, maybe even older, because they pull it out of the ocean or out of some lake that's got fresh water. We can't take it out of the ocean. It's not salt water. Well, yeah, okay. Well, but they can be, I don't know. They were just talking about it. They take it, they, they get freshwater lake, but some of the water in that freshwater lake could be a million years old. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I sincerely doubt that's true because some of those lakes are drying up. Well, now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, I, you know, and I, I remember us having the cracked crab and the, yep. you know, had the sauce and 
We have I'm my sure. parents had the bottle of what they called Dago red wine. Uh, Italian, really, you know, that Italian basic red wine and uh, the sourdough French bread. And there was nothing better for dinner. Nothing sounds better. Like, sounds like a great kosher meal. <laughs> you know, hardly, hardly. I had a very kosher meal tonight. I had lobster rolls <laughs> from, from, from Stu Leonard's. They cost about 30 bucks for three, uh, 35 bucks for three, four bucks for three of them. Wow. And, uh, oh, yeah. huh? We used to have lobsters right on the edge of Connecticut versus Long Island. Sure. Yeah, did you, did you ever have that when you came here? Who, me? Yeah. Lobsters from Connecticut. Right. No, I, I, the lobsters I have always been used to getting are the ones from Maine. Yeah, well there used to be. But the first time I ever had lobster, I had it out on the, uh, I went out to this guy Jerry Wexler's home for dinner. And they served lobster, and they lived out on uh, the uh, the mm. Long Island, Long Island. And I think they caught it off of Long Island, is where they got the lobsters from. There could have been because I remember probably when I was um, I don't know thirty five years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the lobsters stopped working, and it was all these fishermen who were there and they had all of these pots and stuff hung down and they they, they all died and I don't know why and, yeah. and they never got replaced well so, yeah so Maine effectively got the whole business they probably weren't weren't being careful about the the okay. culling of them or whatever the fish yeah the fish there was some chemical problem there it may be that yeah. but also we they don't may, know what it was they may have been not well i think they adhered here to the months with r as well as a way mm -hmm. of not overfishing uh those things but you know those are when you talk about crab and you talk about lobsters they're really bottom feeders in fact that's why jews don't eat it they're called trafe mm -hmm. And they're considered, uh, and they were when in in the old days, you could die from eating them, you know, because mm. they, you know, certain poison and whatever. But anyway, it was, uh, it uh, they were really really pretty good, you know. Anyway, we we had we had when I was growing up, we yeah. had uh, my parents had some friends that owned in Oakland, Great Atlantic Lobster Company, and they had imported lobster and crab and stuff so mm -hmm. you know friends of mine now want to go out and have lobster because it's so expensive and it, 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 it tastes good I, I had lobster all the time and crab all the time as a kid well as as kids in uh, in california you didn't have that much lobster because I lobster did. didn't travel well from the east coast and if you bought it here it was just terribly expensive so it, there rather so in California, Dungeness crab was the big deal. Mm -hmm. It still is. You know. When you can, when you can find them. Y mm -hmm. Yeah, when you can find them. They all moved to Ray's house. Yeah. I was uh, just talking, Ray, about the fact that, uh, uh, boy, you're you're using that uh, Zoom thing, aren't you? Using the what? Zoom green screen thing. Well, because I don't have enough light after I moved my desk. Yeah, well, I got enough light now. But it, but it looks, you know, you know something. No, but when I put, I have a green screen on. That's what happens. Well, the zoom thing. No, the zoom thing. You're uh -huh. using the zoom. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of. Fake what, green screen. Fake right. green screen. Right. And it it really doesn't work that well. No, I know, but the problem is like when I check, I have a green screen. Look at that. That's See what, what it does. That's don't. That's what. Yeah, don't use huh? the fake one. Don't use the fake one. That's the real one. That's the real mm -hmm. one. Yeah, because my green screen isn't lit enough because I moved my desk and the light isn't working. Oh, well, you should get a couple of lights like I have. Yeah, They're in the other room. I can go get them. <laughs> no, no. Why don't you just turn it off? Why don't you just not That's, what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. going to like... Uh, Look, yeah. yeah, none. There we go. There we go. Yeah. And then I'm gonna pull it down. Yeah, pull just pull it down. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's what I got in back of me. If I pull on the side here, oh, wait a minute. If I pull on the side here, no, I guess I I can't do it. I was gonna say people could see the 
the problem with it. But Whatever anyway. Whatever Jeff's home, he has his green screen. I like those uh, those doors, by the way. Yeah, well, that's, that's a very nice background. Yeah. It yeah, is. It is. Yeah. It is. We can, yeah. But we anyway, can you know what, I was, I, I, what we were talking it. about earlier, um, Ray, and yeah. maybe you haven't noticed it either, but I just read an article in the New York Times. Guess what's disappearing in the Bay Area? Fog. Yep. I just read it about 10 yeah. minutes ago. See? See? They had a cool, really cool graphic in the New York Times too did, online. Yeah. Did you know? Did you know that it was it was it was disappearing? No, I, I kind <laughs> of noticed. I've been wondering lately. Now, now, I now. Uh, I mean, we love the fog, didn't we? <clears throat> it, it keeps this, the air clean in the city. Well, it's I, used, San Fran- I used to call. I like- they mentioned the in this article. <clears throat> The very thing I have said for years, and that is it made San Francisco the only air-conditioned city. Right. Because what would happen is on a warm night, the cold fog would move in and just yep. cool the air and beautifully. And yep. and the moisture was just kind of, it was almost like as if you were spraying your face, you know? Yeah. Misting your face. I thought it was like being inside a cloud. It can that's, be that's it can be good, relatively yeah. warm out with the high temperature in San Francisco in the evening, and the fog comes in, and the temperature is still the same, but there's this moisture in the air, and it just feels great. Well, it does yep. bring and the temperature down, though. It does bring yeah, the it does. Down. But it feels like it brings it down more than it actually does because it just mm-hmm. cools you off. Yeah, and I then know. like in the it, when it's really cold and that really fog wet air is so great to breathe. I love it. I mean, I, I imagine that that would depress me greatly if I went back to San Francisco now and there was no fog. Well, it's still there. It's just you can you sort of can notice it like getting less and less. What I used to love about the fog was the way in which it would occur during the day many times, mm-hmm. where the entire bridge, the entire San Francisco uh, Golden Gate Bridge, would be. Filled in, it'd be, be clear on either <clears throat> side. You could go to San Francisco, you go to Marin, it's clear. As you're driving across the bridge, the bridge itself was covered with fog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Wasn't uh, it Tony Bennett that sung the song, I Left My Fog in San Francisco? No. no. I Left My Heart. Uh, uh, my uh, heart. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, but the fog is, the fog is, is, is going, it's disappearing. Due to global warming. Blame it on the Republicans. Yeah. There's no such thing as global warming. Uh, uh, yeah, well, Phil doesn't That's believe Donald in Donald Trump claims. Phil doesn't believe in global warming. It's a political issue. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cyclical issue, but... Uh, oh, it's a, oh, it's no, a, it, no, it's not a cyclical issue, Phil. <laughs> if no, you want the fog, you, you just got to have you fire. You dumb when it comes to science. Don't even start. Oh yeah. Well, there are cycles on the Earth, but you know they already—they know are, that we're the, speeding it up. There's no they, doubt about it. And they know what those cycles are. And the fact that you know we're losing fog in San Francisco is pretty phenomenal. The f- wildfires, all of that. And know. also, if uh, you know, it's different in other countries, like places like Indonesia, where it's really flat and narrow. They're already making plans to move cities inland. I mean, to yeah. them, it's a no-brainer. This is happening. They already have all kinds of problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they know there's no glacier left on the top of Mount Shasta, which is always there all year long. What? Really? Yeah, yeah. it's gone. I I walked up oh. that glacier. It's gone. Yeah. Wow. I heard about that. Oh. Boy. I mean, all the pictures of Mount Shasta has that glacier on it. Yeah. By by 2030, there will be no glaciers in Glacier National Park. Wow. But it's Phil, to change the name. But yeah. Phil, there's no there, the Trump National Park. There's no climate change, is there? No. 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 How could you say that? How can you say that? Why is it a political issue? That makes no sense. Uh, because you know, geology was my easy A and oh. I know that things are cyclical. Wait a minute. This is Yeah, things not, are cyclical, but we have an effect. We're not talking. like just like the ozone. Remember the ozone layer? Yeah, uh, you mean the one that was vanishing uh, in the yeah sun? that we fixed by getting together as the world and got, got and rid we of carbon. Why That's would you laugh fix- at this shit? We, we was- don't have that much power to wow. fix things. Wow. When I hear shit like this, I want to like hang up. Sorry, Phil, but it's just so fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, uh, it's the COVID effect. It really is, man. 
cyclical. Like when you say cyclical shit like that, is, it's just like so the, fucking stupid. The stock market is cyclical, Phil. The fog's not going to come and go every five years. No, I, I have no patience for this Trump bullshit it, it's crap. It's not Trump bullshit. It yes, might, it is. It it's Republican be, bullshit. Listen, you know, it, it might on. be every 200 years or 500 years. There was dinosaurs at well, one time, and they got wiped out. Was that years? A global warming? Well, then I guess Republicans are just <laughs> No, that's then. something else, that's Phil. That's, said, wait yeah. a minute. Hold on a second. Phil, it's that's something cycle. else. That's something else. Oh, my God. Called, no, wait, that's what not, about isms? Can, can I say something here? That's not... Uh, 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 that's called extinction. It's an entirely different process. It was the result. Things of become this. extinct, but yes, that's not as a result of global extreme. warming. Although, although the Earth was very warm and very hot, and so global the the we had the ice age, which came along, and what it did was it took it took the Earth and it literally uh, the ice age its function was to clear off a certain amount of soil on the top of the earth so that when it finally went away we had a re renewed earth and that is exactly what's going to happen again because the earth i got news for you. hold on a second phil before you say anything stupid again that's stupid uh, uh, uh the fact is that a a ice age will happen again when this planet goes fuck all y'all i gotta clean this planet off because I'm going to survive. Do you know what plate tectonics are? Uh, yes. Is? Yes. Okay. That, you know that, that that's the the Earth moving and things expanding and contracting, and uh, this is normal uh, for this planet. And nothing. No, that, you're talking about earthquakes, Phil. We're not talking no, about it's earthquakes. More than earthquakes. We're, it's we're, we're talking ocean. about earthquakes. It, yeah. It's oceans where there was where we now have desert. That has nothing to do with plate tectonics. Right? Yeah, because what happened is that there were plates that moved and uh, mm -hmm. areas of the world that uh, were once ocean are now desert and vice versa. And and so we, we get climate that changes. It's not tectonics. a Republican thing. Over thousands thing. of it's, years, Phil. Over right, thousands it's not of a, years, not over 10, 20 years. Well, where, where are the part of the thousands of years that we're, we're seeing more change. Phil, Phil, it has been profound over the last, I'd say, 50 years, my lifetime. It's been profound. Yeah. Okay. Not over hundreds of years. Maybe because we're more aware of it now than we Phil, were Phil, it is profound. Uh, prior to it's this. profound, and we know the reasons why. Scientifically, <laughs> we know the reasons why. It's the greenhouse effect. When you add excessive carbon dioxide into the air it causes warming i mean it's republicans that was an undergraduate we him. did that experiment we took a flask and we injected carbon dioxide into it and without any heating source around it it heated up the air because it started to absorb heat from the light from oh, oh. you know it, it's you study geology he happens to be a scientist how how do you he wears I'm sorry Phil, I didn't mean to be disrespectful before, but like how is it that you feel that adding extra carbon into the air is not having some incremental effect on maybe what's how? Of course it's having an incremental effect. Okay. But it, what what we do as, as people, yes, we're we're ruining the planet, but we can't make as in order to make that kind of change it, we're just part of the change that's that's happening now. Do you think that the dinosaurs so were naive. made extinct? The, the, the di dinosaurs were made extinct by a meteor. That's what that's what the prevailing thought is. Yeah, yeah. And and it, and it wasn't just the change no, in, in no, temperature due no, to cyclical no, change. It wasn't. The, no. They even know where the hole from this meteor is yeah. in the ocean. It's Absolutely. huge. Absolutely. <clears throat> it, it caused a giant indentation. Yeah, right. Now it's and now it's called Mar Lago. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, and it, it caused it, an incredible it, 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 change it, it, it in the atmosphere. It was a major, a major cataclysmic event, which well, affected, well, the, which hold on a second, infected it is well, not infected, but affected the entire planet. Okay. Would have been similar to a nuclear war. And it brought about the extinction of a whole bunch of species. I think the only thing that survived were cockroaches. 
And, well, that, and that's true. why we, you're here today, Phil. But we, yes. <laughs> we, we, wait a minute. We recreated and, <sighs> and and repopulated, and there were new species that came about. Oh yeah. Because yeah. this is the cycle that that happens. No, but I think point the. The point is, Phil, is that we're accelerating this cycle to yeah. the point where we won't There's be able to manage There's a difference. Phil, it. what you seem to not understand is what you're talking about was evolution. And this is, this wait a minute, is this evolution. Is, this is not evolution. No, like no. Just, this but is, you don't want to let go of it. This is caused by man-made uh, factors. The fact of the matter was that prior, the, the trouble is that prior to about the year 1900, we didn't have anything like the American automobile. We didn't have a lot of things which were polluting the air because that wasn't what was getting us around. That wasn't a form of transportation. We had horses with horse shit in the streets, but that was about it. Then as the years went on, we came to the right. automotive age and we came to the industrial age and we started using a lot of these fuels which put out with carbon monoxide and things like that and uh, it got worse and worse and more predominant, more predominant to where there were millions and millions and hundreds of millions of cars and, and all these things. And so we, in a record amount of time, started changing the way the planet was, was, was reacting and the way in which it was, you know, and the kind of stuff that was happening in the air uh, that, as a result of that. And that's why it's happened so fast now. But to say that it's part of the same evolution that we had when the dinosaurs became extinct, that was a whole different thing. It's an, it's an example of the no, cycle. No, it's not an example because that had nothing to do with global warming. Now, 30, 30 You didn't listen to me, ago. Phil. That had nothing to do with global warming. No, that's, that's your premise, no, not mine. That's my, uh, let's go to the scientists among us. Charlie? Yeah, also, 97% of the Earth scientists. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. you, you don't agree with 97% of the Earth scientists. And let me just say this. I think they're smarter than you are. Now, these 97%, are they the ones 35 years ago that said, oh, it's going to be glo global cooling that's going it to... It was, until we started dumping all the CO2 in the air to warm things up. Yeah, we were headed toward another ice age. We hit it. A, we hit not. a tipping... It was a tipping point. Yeah. That's well, turned it the other way that we didn't anticipate. Phil, 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 you sound I, stupid. You sound stupid. What? Guys gullible. Are gullible. And you sound stupid. Why are we gullible? Like, tell us, tell us how this is because gullible. Because what is, you got some quack that, that's telling you that this, this is what's going on in Sweden somewhere, and, and not, it's ready to buy their BS. It's not some quack. It, it is 99% of the Earth's scientists. And what would be the motivation of these people for, of lying? Well, this thing, thing called carbon credits, and Gore was one of the proponents. What does, there we go. Oh, I knew it. carbon I knew it. I knew it had to do with, I knew it had to do with Denmark, Dem, the Democrat, Democrat. Party. <laughs> the the yeah. Democrat there Party. There we go. I was waiting. I was waiting. I threw, I threw the line out, and you bit it. Hey, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Uh, That's why we love you. I, 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 think, I think Trump proved that the Republican Party doesn't believe in science. Another premise I don't agree with. Yeah, well, Who are the uh, Republican scientists? Well, then you he haven't been paying doesn't. attention, Phil. Trump and by the way, your 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 Republicans well, are. He's a really, good scientist. Your Republicans right? are really out of the Paris Accord. You, that you, we're trying you, to slow you, down. Republicans, your Republicans are, are thinking that there's a way to uh, really win in November, and that is they're just going to double down on abortion. And they're 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 killing themselves I, with that. I think one. that's what the Democrats are doing is they're doubling down on abortion, but they're ignoring the fact that the economy is in the dumper and that uh, mm -hmm. that people can't afford the well, what their parts family. of the economy are in the dumper uh, retail. I can tell you that well, retail. OK, but that's not that's not the and, whole and, economy and uh, food. What about the cost of food? And that's not the whole economy mm -hmm. either. Yeah, well, it makes a big part of it. If you can't eat, you don't need the rest of the economy. Well, I think we're all eating. We're just not yeah. eating as much as we used to or in the way. Well, Alan is. <laughs> he never misses a meal. The Republicans oh, are the ones who are pushing nice, the Phil. whole abortion thing. That, that was a cheap shot. Yes, it was. Really? It deserves it. 
<laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know. I'm going to eat Well, I, I could say the same thing about you, Phil, in comparison to me. You fat yeah. fuck. Well, actually, I'm down nine pounds now. Oh, great. You know what they call that? A spit, in the, a spit in the fucking ocean. Uh, I think they call it a bowel movement, don't they? <laughs> yeah, you take one good dump and that I lose nine pounds. Right. Wow, really? Nine pounds God. isn't anything. That's the better diet. No, Can nine. You take a picture. Nine pounds is fluctuation, Phil. Uh, no, because I'm also exercising uh, three times a week, doing CrossFit. You know, between and you that, know what, Phil? You know what, Phil? Uh, yeah. Spit in the fucking ocean. It's still <laughs> fat. You know. <laughs> uh, we'll see for how long. <clears throat> Well, we'll, well, we've been watching you, and it doesn't seem to be changing. Well, you know, if you look at some of the 2014, 15, and 16... Uh, I think if you were really and, intent on losing weight, you wouldn't have done anything about the prostate cancer. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you had to do something about that prostate cancer. And, you know, I did something about mine, and I had lost like 60 pounds and I put about 30 of it back on because of the cancer stuff <coughs> you know I lost weight since the cancer stuff yeah yeah really first of all the prostate weighs a lot and they took it out yeah. but uh you know like 60 grams yeah uh, mine was more than that 80 grams then uh, it's under three ounces or you wouldn't be able to urinate period I wasn't but it, I think it was 135. Nah. No. Really? Uh, yeah, a normal one you know is 35. You know what a gram is? Oh, uh, well, you're a scientist. Uh, a, a normal one was... Yes, was I always like to think of Phil as Mr. Wizard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, what, what's the, uh, what's the uh, weight scale that they use for a prostate? <laughs> what's a weight scale they use for a prostate? Yeah, I don't know, a prostate weight it's not grams it's um sure it is yeah it's probably well, grams. Is, uh, well, look at your medical chart. it'll stuff. say he had a a 40 or 50 gram oh well, wait a minute. Uh, we have to defer to phil because he's mr science yes thank you so, yeah. so just just to just to make this a little easier for you 30 grams well 28 point something grams is one ounce okay, okay. Just to make it a little easier. For <laughs> well, you're just confusing him. My 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 prostate was uh, Phil, 135 Phil. when a normal one is 35. A prostate is about the size of a walnut. Maybe yours right. was a little. Mine larger. was like a grapefruit. No, I don't think it was like a grapefruit. Well, it was okay. 135. Uh, whatever the uh, whatever the scale is, is oh, very nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, is, that fat, who is that fat cop? Brown face. That was me. And I had a 34-inch waist then. Hmm. Yeah, where? Um, On which leg? Yeah. Yep, yeah. that was... Uh, that yeah, that's better. So what do you have now? 38. A 35-inch waist. 38. 38. Mm -hmm. uh, you've lost weight. Oh, I, sorry, I'm doing my math. Well, that was 1984. Or five. Yeah. Where's the tiger from? Which one? <laughs> uh, it, there, there was an event going on at the Richmond Auditorium, and the it was a karate match, and the guy rented two tigers from uh, not Six Flags, and it Marine was part Park. of their their feed a cop program. Yeah, <laughs> feed a and, feed, and no, so feed a feed a tiger they program. Were, they were waiting me. to bring them into the auditorium for the show, and the handler said, "You want your picture." with uh, one of the tigers so i said sure so i knelt down put my hand over the tiger and they took a picture uh, i hope they... and that that's probably the first rent-a-cop that ever had that their picture taken with that tiger yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember marine world africa usa you used to yeah. be able to do that's that that's where he said it came from yeah 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 i had a friend who was the publicity woman for um Marine World Africa USA mm -hmm. and uh, she was going to take me to a place I never got to go there she knew this guy who when they the tigers got old and the lions got old and all of that he had a place in upstate California where he let them roam and uh, spend their their declining years there 
and oh, wow. uh, she was going to take me up there because she said it was wonderful to see how this guy was taking care of these animals. Because they had to feed the animals to. Eventually, you know, though, they closed down Amer uh, uh, you know, Marine World Africa USA because they didn't. Uh, people were complaining about all these animals, you know, being uh, in captivity. In captivity. They moved it up to Vacaville or whatever. Uh, well, they Same, yeah, they moved it to Vacaville, Vacaville, but they moved it to Vacaville, but they finally they had to close it down because too many people were complaining about it. But mm. her argument to me was, and she was the PR person, and it made it, it made a lot of sense. She said the thing about zoos and about Marine World Africa USA and so on is this was the only place the kids were actually going to be able to see these animals, you know, mm -hmm. and, and get an appreciation for them. Uh, and uh, it was really a question of how they were being treated. And she said they were, they treated them quite well. You know, they did. I, uh, I had a friend who worked there. She was one of the water skiers. And then I, I worked at a health club where we had a bunch of people who were the trainers and they were the nicest people. And they were really, really, you know, yeah. It really cared about the animals, I can say. I mean, uh, oh, by the way, a... by the way, can I mention something here? Because we, we lost some subscribers in the last couple of days. Uh, it would be very helpful if you're watching this if you would just hit the subscribe button. You know, it's like, you know, you know, smash those it. Whale, smash they, they, it. They, they fed your prostate to those whales, Phil. Yeah. You see can that I, behind can I, me? Can wait a minute. That's, it's, can I, that's the San Francisco Bay. Can I finish? Can I finish my plug, please? For my <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. For people to hit the subscribe button. Punch the subscribe. And the like button. Oh, also the like button and the bell, the notification. And the notification. Yeah, the yeah. notification. Just go right now, everybody. Click them. Just. I did it. it. I did it. Oh, you I didn't did do it before, it before huh? No, no, I. Well, no, I had it all on. I'm just saying I did it. Even though I already did. Yeah, because I, if I look now, I bet it's uh, still not changed. I asked people to do it here. Let me see here. Uh, oh, we're up to, yeah, we got two people. Go. Get two people. Yeah. Get, come on, folks. Where it it's is. our new telethon. Why don't you get your uh, voice guy to put that in your app? Hey, your... hey, Alex, when you ask people to, to subscribe, it went from 41 watching to 38. <laughs> oh no, that's no, different. that's because that, uh, that's because I got on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that anyway, I uh, uh, I don't care where Phil says it. Why Phil doesn't agree? Why it happened? I I hate global warming because I love the fog, and I hate to see it going the way of the dodo, but it's uh -huh. it's disappearing, and um, it, it it was a part of my life, and a very romantic part of my life. You know, yeah, me too. I mean, that's, I grew up there, and it's one of the things that you know it just kind of stays with you because you never experienced it anywhere else. There's nothing it's, like it, what like nighttime walking through San Francisco, like down awesome. North Beach, and that fog kind of rolling in, and the yeah. fog being on the streets it, where you couldn't very see. Very romantic. Oh, very oh! Romantic. If you couldn't get laid in that fog, you know, yeah, really, you were. You you were Phil if you couldn't get laid in that fog. There's there's Alcatraz behind me, uh, after the global warming. In twenty thirty three. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I used to live uh, in Pacific Heights, and mm -hmm. you would hear the foghorns. Uh, actually, I lived in the marina for a while, right behind the Safeway, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the fo you could hear the fog horns in the morning. It was it was beautiful. Well, I used to now, talk about it. I would lie I would lie in bed at night and on Telegraph Hill, hearing mm -hmm. these fog horns talking to each other. They're not fog horns anymore. Now they're no. electronic. I, that's they're funny. fake. You, you didn't yeah. you weren't here when wow. I mentioned it that they're oh, all yeah. fake now. Yeah. yeah, but they and they the reason they're fake is because they turned them all off. And then everybody complained there were no foghorns anymore, so they went and created the fake foghorns, which are still on those same rocks, but they just, you know, they're all the same pitch. Every foghorn used to have a different sound, and they yeah. would, so like, when, talk when to Bill, each when other. You were, when you were in San Francisco and those foghorns were going off, I'll bet there were a lot of happy sheep. <laughs> I don't get that. I, you know how, how sheep... But I don't, I don't know what it has to do with fog, but she, <laughs> she like to get laid, you know. Uh, I'm okay. lost. 
Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 what, I don't know. You mean the horn? I often no. said that it isn't a joke worth telling if you have to explain it. I just yeah. thought of it. It didn't work out. You got to try these things elsewhere. Really? You're very oh, experimental. Yeah, Walmart. Sorry. Most of mine. <laughs> most of mine are pretty good. Jeff laughs at most of mine. So. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more, more than more than most of the other people. But, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, Once in a while, you have a flub, you know. And, uh, yeah. My friend's movie came out today. I watched it on uh, Prime. Uh, it's called Tomorrow's Today, and. Uh, it's um, it's it's got a comedian, a Greek comedian uh, from New York, and the, the thing takes place in Astoria. Uh, it's 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 an interesting movie. My friend Sto uh, Stony Jackson, who was on your show once, uh, uh, was part of it. What do you mean he was part of it? He was a photographer. Oh, he's a cinematographer. Yeah. He did the stills. Uh, well, that's not really making the money. That's working on the publicity. Yeah, well, and also his buddy, who is a comedian, and I can't pronounce his name. I'm a Facebook friends with him, uh, Greg uh, Kistosis or something like Abbott. that. Uh, Abbott. He's, uh, he was the star of the movie. What's the name of the movie? Uh, it used to be called, when they were making it, it was called Charlie Boy, yeah. and that was called Tomorrow's Today. Uh oh. How did they go from Charlie Boy to Tomorrow's Today? I don't know. Charlie Boy was the star of the movie, and uh, that was uh, Greg. Uh, the um, and if it's uh, on Prime, that means that it's not very good. Well, oh. you had to actually. I had a pay. Oh, there we go, Charlie Boy. Oh, by uh, the, by well, the what? No, uh, yeah, Charlie oh, Boy. But it's Tomorrow's Today is the is the is the actual name. It's listed as Charlie Boy in IMDb still. Oh, <laughs> FYI. Yeah. yeah. AKA. Uh, by the way, uh, Charlotte, raise Charlotte. your hands if you're not disappointed that Chuck Bezos, uh, Chuck Bezos, uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff Bezos' rocket blew up. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hear that. Well, That's I'm disappointing. Crazy. I'm not disappointed. Yeah. Did you hear about? You didn't hear about that, Jeff? Oh, oh yeah, I oh. did. And, and and nobody likes that to happen. You know, they they're trying to succeed. What do you mean? There was nobody in the, there was nobody in the I know, capsule. but they 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 you oh, know, they I hope been. he does I hope he doesn't succeed at all. He's just a blowhard. He's not he's not creating anything of science. He's just sending up a rocket. That's all. He's creating more than uh than Alan, you hey, know. Hey, after the way he treated my hero William Shatner, I don't care what happens. He to took him up into space. Yeah, but did you see like when they did the interview, he wouldn't even let him talk. That's William Shatner. Yeah. William. He, he did us a favor. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I, 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 I just hate Bezos' whole space thing because all it is is like, a, a, you know, a, an amusement ride is what he's created, an expensive amusement ride. You know, and, and, and he's not really sending people into space. He's sending, what, what's it called, Charlie? It's not called space. It's kind of the edge of space, but yeah, it's, it's not even in orbit. They don't even orbit the planet. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, and they go, oh, we're floating around. Oh, wait a minute, we're coming down now. Yeah, yeah. Does, any, does anybody cool. here have one of those cars that he sells? Oh, the test. Oh, no, he, that's the, no, that's no, uh, the other guy. Elon Musk. Musk. That's Elon Musk. That's Elon Musk. Uh, no, this guy owns Amazon. Yeah. Oh, I thought Amazon had cars. Wow. Mm. No. 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 He's wow. About this big, and you know uh, Brian, here he has they don't even have delivery Amazon. vans. Have you seen how their people deliver Amazon? They have these big box, big giant boxes they drag around. Have you seen those things? Yeah. Yeah. We have vans here. We have Amazon. Here they have vans that say yeah. Amazon Prime on them. Or yes, Prime. but then yeah, they do, then they them. then they let all your boxes off with these guys who have these giant bins that they drag oh. around. From neighborhood to in neighborhood. New York, but not here. Not here. They drive up to your house in the Amazon. Yeah, they, they drive. It looks like a UPS truck almost. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. More modern. Yep. Yeah. Well, these are guys mm -hmm. that whenever they, they're very good at delivering to my front door when it's a small little package. Yeah. But when it's like a, bo a, a case of seltzer, they never bring it up. You know? So I'm, I'm, I, I can't, I can't stand Bezos. What a, piece of crap he is 
Yeah. I don't know. He saved us and for some of us during COVID from having to go out. We were able to order and have it delivered to our door. Well, I, you know, I mean, I was doing that before. The, the people, I'll tell you the people who, who saved my life. This is, I know it's strange and I hate to bring up a company like this, but Instacart did it for me because I didn't want to go over to Costco to shop because I didn't want to catch COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Because leaving the right. house and during that time was a death sentence, okay? Yep. And yep. so we uh, we used to order from Costco using <laughs> Instacart, and we now to this day still use, I haven't been to Costco in a year, you know. Um, but we, and then Marjorie orders food from Stu Leonard's and from all different places using Instacart, and they really have come into their own during COVID. Amazon has made life a very, very easy. You know, there really is very few things that you can't get on Amazon. Well, You've yeah, but they've things. also, you know what they've also done? They've killed individual commerce. You know, they've killed... That's progress. You know, they, they, <clears throat> ask your local uh, uh, store, you know, or your department store, can they exist anymore? And the answer is no. Long before uh, uh, Amazon, if you went into Macy's, you couldn't even get somebody to show you a price. You had to take the tag over to a, a kiosk, put it up to a kiosk. They, they took away all the service from uh, those I, Well, schools. I don't know what happened towards the end, but when I was growing up and when I was going to Macy's, they were a fine store to do business Yes, with. and they were, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. back in the last century. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, now, are you, do you know who actually blew it? really blew it during uh, the last many years sears sears yeah. they disappeared oh, yeah. they've disappeared completely now who was the amazon of its time sears, sears. with catalog sears. with the sears catalog they yeah. should have yeah. they should have known when they saw amazon starting up gone good idea yeah let's just take our entire sears. catalog put it online and ship the stuff out online. to people. Yeah, they 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 did put it online, but they did not publicize it. It was and yeah. it was fantastic. Like, I wanted to get parts for my barbecue, and I was able to find them. They had detailed schematics of everything. It was incredible. But if you wanted to buy overalls, you can, we got them from the Sears catalog. If you want yeah. bird seed, you bought it from the the. In other words, the Sears catalog had everything. My first car was a, was a car that was sold by Sears. It was called a Henry J. Yeah, yeah. I remember the Henry and, J. Yeah, and yeah. that was sold in the Sears catalog. It was made, by, was made by Kaiser. Yeah. Right. Uh, All State Insurance was sold <laughs> by uh, uh, Sears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could buy a prefab house from Sears. Yeah, you, the catalog, it, but all I'm saying is they didn't say to themselves, you know, we should really put all of this online like this guy's trying to start doing. And we could probably beat him out of his own game because everybody knows the Sears catalog. They did it, but they just did a bad job of... No, they did it too late. I think they did it too late. Is what Nobody yeah. got... You see, the problem with the Sears catalog was when you were a kid, you didn't get past the B section in the Sears catalog because that was Brazier's. And you know, <laughs> yeah. all kids, <laughs> where, what did you look at? You looked at the Brazier's. Well, and the National Geographic. I'll tell yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some oh, Bill's, Bill's probably got the largest collection of Walnut Creek of those Brazier's. <laughs> oh, jeez. With, with your assless chaps. <laughs> you know, but hey, it, do, does Sears still have the diehard battery and Craftsman tools and Kenmore? Not, and yes and no. Are they, they still sold, around? Are they still around? No, they they sold the name uh, of uh, the not diehard, but the Craftsman name. Yeah. I believe Lowe's has that now. That uh, right. And uh, so everything is being dissolved. They, they were in bankruptcy. I don't. I yeah. think all the assets are. Being well, sold. before they went to bankruptcy, they really lowered their standards. Walmart, a uh, 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 Kmart bought them out. Well, Kmart's bankrupt too, aren't they? I know, but Kmart bought Sears out, and you knew things were going downhill from there. We had a Sears right near my house, and I used to go there all the time because there was never anyone there. <laughs> I, I, I never, really, you know, know I never, even, even when I was a kid, I never, I never went to Sears. I, yeah. I like Sears. Used to have a candy department and a counter where you could sit down. Oh, yeah, so did Macy's. Ice cream and, and and little sandwiches and stuff in Sears. Yeah. Well, actually, my favorite store when I was a kid, just because it was was Woolworths. Woolworths, Woolworths with the ice yeah. cream. 
and, yeah. and because and they had ice gravy and all kinds of things. But I also love the fact they had these guys all over Woolworths selling stuff, uh, demonstrating stuff. Hey, come on over. Oh, yeah. Costco. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like Costco. Costco well, has No, it. but there they feed you. They, you know, yeah. they feed you a little. Feed you and they give you a sample. A sample. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and then you go and get yeah, the next but, sample. But I used to love these guys that, you know, those guys, by the way, those guys, their their whole life was spent being pitch men in Woolworths and places like that. And they were replaced by like Ron Popeil and all these people <laughs> that started doing it on television. I mean, to this day, if I come across a pitch guy on television, Selling mm -hmm. something like a deep fat fryer or something. I sit there and watch it. I'm fascinated by the it. The guy with the Ginsu knives, you know, uh, is, is great. But the, these that was the, Popeil. No, well, uh, I, was, I no, no. Who no, was the who, who was the young thin guy I that can't, uh, I can't remember? But all I know uh, is I interviewed Ron Popeil, and mm -hmm. his his whole. He said, "Do you know why my stuff sells and why I can get people to buy it?" When I start out on a commercial, I say, well, here, we're giving out a, you know, a, a pocket a, fisherman. A, 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 well, no, not a pocket fisherman, but we're uh, selling a deep fat fryer. Okay. Right. The P Ronco deep fat fryer. And uh, by the way, if you, or uh, okay, but that's not all. If you order right now, we'll send you 10 Ginsu knives. Mm. But that's not all. If, and then by the time they were through <laughs> for the $100 or so you might buy the fryer for, you got this whole shitload of stuff coming to your house for the and same price. He said that's what sold his stuff. Is he kept saying, but that's not all. There's more. Right, but in sales, that's but adding value more. to where the lump yeah, of stuff it, you're giving. It starts is off, more. and you show the value of that item yeah. in right. the very beginning because you show how good it is and what it can do and how terrific it is. But that's not all. And Phil's yeah. carpet store. When people come in to buy carpet, he says he'll mow their lawn for 20 years too. And that there was a carpet store. Stuff. There was a carpet store in Livermore that used to give uh, a toaster and uh, all sorts of free stuff. And wow, I really? Think the guy was pretty successful. He's he, out of business, he, didn't he? No, no, I think he's still around. That's good carpet. But he, but no, yeah, that guy's dead. Hey, do you remember the Fuller Brush Man he used to come? Yes. To the house? Sure. They yeah. started with a free. Uh, thing to get in the door, so they 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 would start right. with a, a gift, which endeared the person and and listen to their pitch. You know, yeah, all, all these pitches worked for a while, you know. Yeah. But time passes, you know. Yeah. But but uh, I gotta tell you, it's cyclical. Women still buy clothes on TV. Yeah, my oh, mother. Does. My QVC. mother. Does it. She's yeah. older than everybody on this show. QVC is the uh, QVC. Is, is the new pitch man. Absolutely. Yeah. She, she loves QVC. She's 89 years old. Yeah. She is always buying stuff on QVC. Anyway, there goes our little theme. Oh. You know. Oh. 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 Uh, just when we were getting back to science with Phil. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. foghorns, huh? Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Uh, uh, hey, listen. Uh, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Jeff, always nice to see you drop by. Uh, and uh, Alan, thank you. Nice to see you. Uh, uh, and and by the way, uh, thank you, Ray. Really like you on the program. Mm -hmm. and, thank you. And, 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 and uh, uh, Phil, uh, is the reason Phil's here tonight, It let it be a lesson to all of you. If more of you would call, he wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> So, uh, you know, let that be a lesson to you, okay? Yes, yeah, smash the like button. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Phil, for letting us know uh, uh, all about science tonight. And, of course. <laughs> My pleasure. And what, what, quickly, what does your shirt say tonight, uh, Charlie? Oh, just as sarcasm, the basic elements of humor. <laughs> Everybody, oh, give, a big, guy, you know, oh, give a big wave goodbye, okay? And I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, fun, you know, had a good time. Turned out to be a good show in spite of everything. Anyway, I'll see you again. Uh, let's see here. When? Oh, yeah. We'll see you again tomorrow night. The same time. The same station in life, 1030 Eastern Time. Uh, in the meantime, as always, if you see her, mm-hmm. Tell her I love her.
Good night, everybody.